Now we're going to look at PG Bouncer configuration. Okay, we've seen the installation process. The next thing is the PG Bouncer configuration. There are some configuration changes that you need to make in order to use PG Bouncer. Now, the first thing we'll talk about is the listen address. If you set it to star, you can let the connections come from any server. Set it to local host, you restrict it to the local server. All right, remember that. And then listen port. The default is 6432, and we want to change it to something else. You can do it here. And this is the important section, databases section, where you need to give one entry per database or use some kind of wildcard all the databases depending on your use case. This is a pretty important part of the PG Bouncer configuration. In this example, we're giving the DB name as this right here. And then the host name is localhost. And then the port, the back end port, and then the DB name. So this one is kind of a DB alias. And this is the actual backend database name. And any connection that is coming to PG Bouncer with this database name will be routed to this host at 5432. Okay, right here. And then the backend database name is employee. The databases section is pretty important. Okay. And then other important parameters is authentication type. If you're using MD5, you should give MD5 here. Trust is insecure, but MD5, if you're using MD5, give it here, okay? The authentication file is where you give the list of users and passwords. The passwords can be in an encrypted form, okay? And this is the location of the authentication file by default. You can change the location if you want, but this is the default location of the authentication file. So we have seen five important sections, listen address, listen port, databases section, and authentication type, and authentication file. Let's move forward. Databases section and various examples. This is an important part of PG Bouncer config as discussed. Let's see some examples. The first example, you're given employee equals host equals this one. Port equals 5432, DB name equals employee. Here, any connection coming to PG Bouncer with this will be sent to this host. And this port, and then the backend DB name is employee. But if you see the second example, you have the employee. The same information as above, but you don't see DB name. By default, whatever is present here will be the backend DB name, if nothing is given. In this case, nothing is given, which means the backend database name is also the same as the one given here. Coming to the third example, if you see the alias is EMP, but the backend DB name is employee. Any connections coming in as EMP will be mapped to employee on this host at 5432. If you see these three different examples, you will understand what is needed for this version, this one. Finally, in this, we are using a wildcard star equals host equals 127 dot the local host and then 5432. In this case, we give star. Any connections for any DB will be routed to this host name and this port. And the database name will be whatever is specified on the client. These are some examples, but you can define the database section of the PG Bouncer configuration based on your needs. Okay, 
Now, here are more parameters. Log file, anything like any errors or any issues you need to troubleshoot, the first thing you would go and look into is pgbouncer.log. This is the location of the pgbouncer.log file, and then the pid file, process ID file. This is the location, default location of the pid file, but if you want, you can change the location. And then admin users. So you need one or more admin users to monitor PG Bouncer and do some administration stuff. Basically, here is where you can specify the admin user. Similarly, stats user, if you want to let some users gather stats, you can give the list of users here. These are the four parameters in this slide. And then important ones are default pool size, depending on your needs. So set your pool size accordingly. And then the pool mode is very important. Default is session, but you have transaction based pooling and then statement based. Depending on your needs, kindly benchmark your workload and decide the pool, more default pool size, etc. But also the max client connection. If you want to restrict the number of client connections, you can give a certain number and there are other important parameters like server reset query alt query depending on your use case you may need to configure more like this i have always shown you the important ones but there are more than these depending on your use case you may need to tweak those as well okay you remember that now moving forward once those configuration changes are made, the next important thing is adding the users to this authentication file. Right here. If you remember the previous slides, we were talking about authentication file, authentication method. In this case, we're using MD5 and the username is PG admin user. And here is the MD5 of that user. You get the MD5 from this command using this command right here. Once you create a user for PG Bouncer, or if you want to use an existing user, you can just run the select command, get the hashtag, and then put it in the authentication file. Basically, once you populate the authentication file, that user can be used to connect via PG Bouncer. If you have an application user, right? You can give that here and then the hash password. And then if you have any admin users or stats users, you can add them here as well. We have covered all the important parameters. And now I'm going to show you live on the system, how to change these parameters and make PG bouncer work. So I'll see you guys then.